pretty clear now we're going through a substantial public health crisis, the likes of which maybe we've never seen before, and certainly going to have a huge impact on our politics, on our policy, on our economy. Nobody better qualified in this town and more respected to talk about the intersection of politics, policy, and economics than Bruce Melman. Greetings. Mark. Post-corona. Yes. Handshakes. I know him from the Bush days. He worked in the Department of Commerce. Well respected across the aisle as a guy who just understands how it all fits together. I'd say a, a consequential week. Yeah. We haven't seen this kind of thing before, right? We've lived through SARS and H1N1 right. and, and swine flu. You know, and each time we were warned that the next one could be this one. What's the best case scenario and what's the worst case scenario? The best case scenario is somewhere in April, we quickly see a cresting and then a falling of new infection rates and that businesses are able to hang on and quickly resume activities. Worst case? 30 to 50 percent of the population catches it. Got a one percent lethality rate at that kind of numbers. It's really bad. Okay. If too much of this crashes at the same time, a, we've got an unbelievably phenomenal health care system. <laughs> They can handle this unless everybody shows up in the emergency room in the same week. But it really should serve as a wake-up call. We weren't ready. We're not prepared. How, how not ready? How does the rest of the world have all this testing and it seems like we're struggling to get our own versions of testing out? The experience of every other country says the way you get through this is extreme testing. We don't know how bad it is here. Can you put this in perspective for crises that other presidents have faced? Well, presidents are defined by crises. The first re-election for Barack Obama was largely a referendum on how he did with the Great Recession. For George W. Bush, it was clearly a referendum on 9-11. Right. Uh, increasingly, it feels like the 2020 election will be a referendum on how the administration handles this crisis. Yeah. This is exactly the time when government, it's what government exists for. A month ago, the Trump campaign was looking at extraordinary economic strength, which is a heck of a good record to campaign on. Trump is the change candidate if it's against Joe Biden. This may reset how people feel about things, but it plays to Biden's weakness previous and now maybe strength is that you get the sense he doesn't do anything. Been there before, knows the routine, and he just knows the levers of government. Boring reassuring. suddenly is in fashion, so yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah something I think is key for leadership in a crisis, which is you want to communicate reassurance. You know, the president has sought to, to reassure and to be very much of a booster. I think the biggest challenge is uh, to remember this isn't about him. This is a national crisis. Yeah. And I think his uh, frequent instinct to perceive those who are critical as taking personal attacks at him needs to be shelved on this one. During the Great Recession, people took personal shots at Barack Obama. During post 9-11, people took personal shots at George W. Bush and the war on terror. It kind of goes with the job. That's yeah. what you do is you take shots while you try to make things great for everybody.